In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. <coughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them. Blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners and the hour of death. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, it instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, granted by the same Spirit, we may be truly wise. And ever rejoice in his consolation to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lady Fatima. Pray for us. St. Joseph. Pray for us. Father Terry. Pray for us. St. Nasha Leola. Pray for us. O God's angels and saints. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Catechesis on prayer, this conference is very apropos to the gospel we've had over the past five weeks and the topic we're going to be entering into right now and the catechesis will be on the Mass. And of course, there's so much that can be said upon the Mass, we'll have to choose one idea. And it would be the four basic ends or purposes of the Mass. This can <coughs> be learned and lived out by understanding an acronym of four letters. And those four letters are A, C, T, and S. Okay, it would be A, C, T, S. If you can understand this, you will be able to derive much more from the Mass. If you can understand this, four-minute catechesis. No? Actually, when I was in St. Paul the Cross, they invited me to give a Lenten conference. That was my hour talk that I gave. So I'll summarize an hour talk in four minutes now. So ACTS. <coughs> This, this is the basic end or purpose of the Mass. So I uh, repeat, if, if you can understand this, when you go to Mass, the Mass is going to be much more meaningful and you'll be able to participate more, more fully in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. There are tons of reasons why people leave the Catholic Church, but you can, you can offer your opinion, I'll give mine, it's because people don't understand the Mass and they didn't hear my homily this morning. Okay? <laughs> Honestly, no. If a leper could drag herself from her hut to the church, cutting herself along the way, if, if you understand that story, you're not going to leave the, faith, the Catholic faith. So it's a, a lack of understanding of really what the Mass is. Okay, scandals, you know, poor air conditioning, and maybe the choir is off. The church sometimes asks for money. Okay, I got you. I get you. I get you. But that, that, that's secondary. That's secondary. Primary reason is we don't understand what Mass is. The previous talk I said when I was 20 years old already thinking about becoming a priest I was on vacation and I would spend I worked at General Motors making cars in Massachusetts. You know? But I would go to Mass and I would spend an hour in preparation an hour in Thanksgiving. Because I reason, if I'm going to receive the Eucharist, I should at least give an hour in preparation. 
in an hour of Thanksgiving. That's probably why I'm a priest now. Because I understood even when I was 20 years old, finishing my second year in the university on vacation, there's nothing better in the world than to receive the Eucharist. So an hour of preparation is short. And an hour of Thanksgiving is short. You have to have faith. Those who have faith, no, no arguments are necessary. Those who don't have faith, not, there's no arguments that are sufficient. You have to have faith which is a gift from God. So the ACTS would be this. A stands for, these are the basic purposes or ends of Mass, is adoration. And I had a plan, I had planned to talk on principle and foundation on adoration, giving you one of my talks on that, but there's just so much time that we have in our talks. So you really want to praise God. The Mass is the highest form of praise of God. You unite yourself with the choir of angels praising the Lord. Holy, holy, holy Lord. C stands for contrition. And you can connect that with reparation. And maybe one being very concrete that, you know, the blasphemy there in the beginning of the Parisian Olympics, we all have to do some type of reparation for that parody, that blasphemy against the, the Last Supper, right? That was, I think, the biggest public scandal in the history of the world, I think. Because it probably hit 1.2 billion people. So I would say it's probably the biggest public scandal in the history of the world, no? because of the mass media. So I think we can offer some of our communions in reparation for that, for that terrible blasphemy. No? If that were done to the Muslims or the Jews, what would, have, what would have happened? All hell would have broken loose, right? But you can do it to the Catholics, no? Okay, so C stands for contrition. You know, add to it reparation, too, in parentheses. T stands for thanksgiving. If you want to receive constant, copious, abundant graces, thank God constantly. If you thank God constantly, God will shower graces upon you constantly. Try it. Believe me. Personally, for me, the easiest prayer for me is Thanksgiving. I, I know, I know, like, I know I've received a lot of blessings. One is, that, believe it or not, I came from a family that was not dysfunctional. It's almost impossible to, today, no? It was not a dysfunction. It was a good, a good, hard-working Catholic family. And it's almost impossible today. The, the fact that I came from a, a family that was dysfunctional is huge. It's huge. So I end on the seminary. I don't have to go through all these, these psychological healing classes because I didn't really have too much to be healed. <laughs> Just have, you know, very good memories of my mom and my dad and very different from the Latino family. We all left. We we all left the night. We all left at 18. Like the Latinos and the Filipinos are shocked about that. But my parents just believed it's our obligation to educate you up to 18. Then you live your own life. They supported us through college, and we could always come home. And my mom has 39 grandchildren. She never felt obliged to watch over grandchildren. That's your obligation, though. <laughs> I know this is a culture shock for all of you people, but we all, we all have different cultures. I think it was good because we had to, we had to grow up. 
my older brother be a spine surgeon, be a priest, and then a soldier. I mean, all, all very successful in the world today. No? So I'm thankful that I came from a hard discipline military family where my parents demand discipline in us. You want to have, raise your family well? My mom and dad had two rules. Obey authority and don't tell lies. Those two rules. Because if you tell lies, you can't trust anyone. If there's no authority from the parents, it's mayhem, it's chaos. It works. It works. <laughs> so Thanksgiving. And letter S stands for a supplication. There's a big college word, huh? <clears throat> Maybe some of you have never heard the word supplication. Supplication, maybe you've heard it before, it means to ask. Ask and you receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open to you. So if you can understand that, those are the four primary ends of the Mass. When you go to Mass, Mass is going to be much more meaningful to you. We're called to praise God, principle and foundation. We all are sinners who so have to beg mercy for our sins. We have to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercy endures forever. And supplication, all of us are like Bartimaeus, the blind beggar on the street, on the street side. So there's our catechesis on prayer. And you can use those four modes in the Mass in your prayer life. You know, you, you praise God, you thank God, you tell God you're sorry, and beg God for graces. So those can be used not only in the Mass, but also in enriching your own prayer life. All right. Well, did you did you relish sitting down at the table with Mary and Jesus and sipping a little bit of the wine? <laughs> How was the wine? Great. Exquisite. You didn't drink too much. No. Okay, good. Just a few sips, right? Just a few sips. Okay. Now, it, it, if that contemplation is done well, it's just a it's just a, a beautiful contemplation. And the way I present, I think, is pretty good. Inviting you to sit in front of Jesus and Mary and just have a conversation and tell them you know, what's bothering you. When I, I give courses on Marian consecration, that's the very heart of my message when I'm giving Marian consecrations in many parishes throughout the diocese. You, know? you want to sit down and just talk to Mary. Mary loves us. Unload. She'll listen to us. She's not going to be looking at, at her watch or even yawning, okay? No. <laughs> She's very attentive to us. So let's move into, we're going to be moving now into the Paschal Mystery. Right now, into the Paschal Mystery. So your meditation this morning, and very appropriate because we'll have adoration of the Blessed Sacrament here in the church, you are God's spoiled children, right? <laughs> Think about this retreat as a real blessing, isn't it? Yes, it is. What a blessing. Having spiritual directors, you know, the air conditioning, the mass, uh, good food, good company. I mean, and you're, you're doing pretty well in the silence as uh, Mary said, try to maintain the silence. You're doing pretty well, no? You maintain the silence and God can speak to you. But if you're, we're talking, we're chattering, then we can't be talking to God at the same time. So try to, try to maintain that silence uh, because God speaks in the silence. All right, so we're moving now into the Paschal Mystery. And my, my first presentation on that will be, I'll be talking about the Last Supper. So there's really, there's so much in this and... Um, I'd, I'd also invite you, uh, if 
Father Victor is with us. He's got a wonderful course Wednesday on the Eucharist, so I invite all of you to come. He's got a class this Wednesday, and then one more after that. Is that right, Father? So he's got, these are really, last one he was talking about the Eucharistic miracles, you know, and there's a lot of beautiful information. So see if you can maybe go to that as a follow-up on the retreat. I think the, the, the entrance is free charge, free of charge. <laughs> Couldn't be better, huh? <laughs> Rattis. <laughs> okay, good. It'll be at, at 7 o'clock, right? 7 o'clock to, it's about an hour presentation. And so I'll, I'll give you some ideas that he, he probably will present or already has. But Fulton Sheen says it's not so much learning new things, but assimilating the things we've, ever, or we've already heard. So I'm saying, I'm telling you, you old timers, some things you've already heard, but maybe you haven't assimilated them yet. Going from the, the head to the heart, there's a, that's hard. The Holy Spirit has to give us a hammer blow, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give you a few, a few scenes, and um, let me give you the biblical, the, the biblical verse that you can take. You can take John chapter 6, which we've been going through the past five weeks in the Mass, especially the Bread of Life discourse, and just read through that very slowly. You know, there's so much in that. And that's a, that is that Bread of Life discourse. It's a, it's a Eucharistic prophecy. Okay? Our Lord is making a prophecy of what's going to happen uh, the next verse will be Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 and following. You might even take 1 Corinthians 11. Do any of you know what that is? 1 Corinthians 11, those are abuses of the Eucharist. As St. Paul reproached the people, they were eating and drinking to their own condemnation. I'll give you another one. This may, may surprise you, but Psalm 23. Psalm 23, what do we have there? The Lord is my shepherd, there's nothing I shall want. It leads me beside restful waters, right? He gives rest to my soul. Even though I have to walk through the dark valley of desolation, you're with me with your rod and your staff. You set a table before me. Could that be the table of the Eucharist? Say yes, Father. Yes. Okay. You set a table before me. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows, right? For me, these are Eucharistic symbols. My cup overflows. And I believe that I will be living in the house of the Lord for years to come. The house would be the church, but also heaven. So I've given you a lot of verses, and um, I'll give you one more. It's the Eucharistic, it's the Last Supper Discourse, which is John 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Did you know that? No, Father. That's the Last Supper Discourse. So I, I've given you uh, enough to meditate until New Year's, right? <laughs> so you choose, and I'm, I'll, I'll paint some scenes, and you can utilize your your imagination entering the scene and remember how to do a contemplation composition of place remember okay see the scene see the persons see their actions hear their words and then derive fruit and your colloquy simple double or triple colloquy cardinal newman our friend cardinal newman says colloquy is a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with the lord John Henry Newman, what a great man, yeah. Probably the greatest writer in the 19th century in England. Heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Heart-to-heart -heart conversation with the Lord. So I'll give you, uh, 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 I'll just uh, give you a quick paintbrush stroke of the scenes that you can enter into. First would be the washing of the feet. Imagine you're there at the, wa the washing of the feet.
Did you ever have your <clears throat> your husband wash your feet? It's not too common because it's really not in our culture. But the time of Jesus, who did that? Those would be the that would be the slaves. The slaves would take off the sandals and get a basin of water and wash the feet. And that was uh, a work of a slave. So Jesus was lowering himself to the level of a slave. Wow. Pray for humility, huh? You think you, you probably think that the the apostles had very fragrant feet smell, didn't they? <laughs> they put maybe Chanel number five on it, and I doubt it. Huh? It smelled of fish, probably. So the washing of the feet. The second would be, Jesus said, I call you friends. I hope during this retreat, especially these closing meditations, that you will grow in friendship with Jesus. El amigo que nunca falla. Yes. Okay? Jesus is the friend that will never fail us. Another would be, Jesus gives us the greatest of all commandments. At the, at the Last Supper. And that would be, love one another as I love you. Love one another as I love you. Beg for the grace to live out this commandment that we read in Luke chapter 10. To love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, strength and to love our neighbors as ourself. St. Francis de Sales, who I mentioned this morning, not only did he write the introduction to the devout life, but he want, wrote one of the greatest works on love. It's called The Treatise of Love. And he said, with respect to love, the measure that we should love God is to love him without measure. You like that? The measure with which we should love God is to love him without measure. So if you want to grow in any virtue, grow in the virtue of charity, and that is supernatural love. St. Thomas Aquinas also says that charity is willing the good of the other. What is the summa bonum of, Aqu of Aquinas? The, what is the greatest good? Is the salvation, the salvation of your soul. You love someone, bring that person to heaven. That's love. You love someone. Do not be a barrier, but be a bridge to heaven. Don't be a barrier. Many people are barriers. No? They're barriers to heaven. We want to be bridges. The Golden Gate Bridge of California. The George Washington Bridge of New York. <laughs> you want to be solid bridges by which we can bring people to heaven. Then there at the Last Supper... Jesus institutes two sacraments. Did you know that? He institutes two sacraments. He takes bread, blesses the bread, says, take and eat this in my body. He says, he takes the cup, blesses it, and says, take and drink this in my blood. So he institutes the great sacrament of the Eucharist. So we are going to be exposing the Blessed Sacrament and I pray that all of you will fall in love with the Eucharist. Amen? Amen. Fall in love with the Eucharist. As the deer yearns for the running streams, so my soul yearns for you, 
O Lord my God, Psalm 41, verse 1, huh? And St. Augustine says, Jesus hungers that you hunger for him. Jesus thirsts that you thirst for him. Yeah. What did Jesus say in the cross? I thirst. He thirsts for our love. And then Jesus, he says, do this in memory of me. Instituting the priesthood. Pray for priests. You've never done that yet, have you? Huh? <laughs> Pray for priests. Pray for priestly vocations. Pray for the sanctification of the priests. One holy priest can save a million souls. Do you believe that? Yes. One priest can save millions of souls. The devil said of the Curie of ours, if there were five more of you, my kingdom would be destroyed. The Curie of ours, right? Five more of you, my kingdom would be destroyed. You, pr you people are at the mercy of your priests, right? Hello? Yes. So pray. Pray for priests, but the sanctification of the priest. That we as priests, we would fall in love with Christ and invite you eventually to read, to read Insigne Jesu, which is an excellent book, not only for priests, but for lay people too, Insigne Jesu. Insigne Jesu, it's a book in which a Benedictine priest in Ireland received locutions from Jesus Christ and he wrote down. It's like what Faustina received from Divine Mercy, this priest received from Jesus Christ. Okay, it's Latin, I-N-S-I-N-U-J-E-S-U. Came out about 15 years ago. And right away, uh, my mother, who she's always ahead of the game, she bought it and gave it to all the priests in the diocese there in, in Florida. <laughs> she's always way ahead of the game. You know? This 93 year old woman, no? <laughs> Believing that if even one of those priests reads that book, he could be converted and become a great saint. Amen? Amen. All right. Then, a couple other scenes. Jesus makes, hopefully you like this word, a, a nefarious prediction. Nefarious. In which he says that the, the shepherd will be struck. And the sheep will be scattered. And all of you will leave me alone. And then Peter pipes up, Peter Piper, huh? Says, they will, but I will not, because I'm Big Pete. What does Jesus say? Amen, amen, I say to you. Before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. If Peter could deny Jesus three times, we could deny him a hundred times, right? Walk humbly before the face of God. There go I, save the grace of God. And then Jesus says, sadly, that one of you will betray me. Is it I, Lord? Ten of them said. One said, Who is it, Lord? Another one said, Is it I, Rabbi? You have said it. Whoever eats from the dish that I eat from, it is he. And he places a morsel in that dish. Judas eats it, and it says, The devil entered into him. And Jesus said, 
What you do, do quickly. And he got out and walked into the darkness. Whenever we leave Jesus Christ, we enter into darkness. Jesus is the light of the world. Whenever we leave him, we enter into darkness. So my friends, there is a treasure drove of graces in this meditation, this contemplation. Beg the Blessed Virgin Mary to, to give you the grace to do the best contemplation in the retreat right now. This will be the best contemplation you've done in this retreat. So you're really opening up your minds, your hearts, to the invasion of the Holy Spirit of divine grace through the intercession of Mary. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.